Hello everyone. Welcome to another lecture. Uh, on my today's lesson, I'm going to talk about up updates on the management of Sydenham's Korea uh, in children. When we see the introduction, Sydenham's Korea is first described in 1686 by Thomas Sydenham. It's one of the major clinical manifestations of acute rheumatic fever and it is the most common form of acquired chorea in childhood. Sydenham's chorea is an antineuronal antibody mediated uh, neuropsychiatric disorder which arises in response to group A beta hemolytic streptococcal infection and it cross reacting with epitopes of neurons within the basal ganglia and the frontal cortex and also other regions. Uh, Sydenham's chorea predominantly uh, it is bilateral and in up to 30% of cases it can be uh, unilaterally restricted. Uh, when we see clinical manifestation and the diagnosis, Sydenham's chorea occurs in approximately 10 to 50% of patients with uh, acute rheumatic fever and uh, it usually presents as an isolated, uh, frequently subtle movement disorder, emotional liability, coordination, poor school performance and uh, uh, uncontrollable movement with facial grammatic, which are characteristics uh, characteristics are uh, exacerbated by stress and uh, they disappear with uh, sleep. So those manifestations, they are exacerbated by stress and uh, they disappear when the patient uh, sleeps. Chorea officially is unilateral, as we have said, in around 30% can be uh, hemichorea. The latent period from uh, acute group A streptococcal infection to chorea is usually substantially longer than that of uh, arthritis or cardiac or other uh, manifestations of uh, uh, rheumatic fever and it can be months. Onset can be insidious with symptoms being present for several months before recognition. Uh, clinical maneuvers that are used to elicit features of chorea include the first one is uh, demonstration of uh, milk mates grip that means regular contraction and relaxation of the muscles of the fingers while squeezing the examiner's fingers. Uh, the other is spooning and the pronation of the hands when the patient arms are extended and also worm and dirting movement of the tongue on the protrusion and also examination of handwriting to evaluate fine matter movement. Diagnosis is based on clinical finding with supportive evidence of group A streptococcal antibodies. However, in the unusual patient with a long latent period from the inciting streptococcal infection to the onset of chorea, antibody levels often uh, decline to normal. Although the acute illness is distressing, chorea rarely, uh, if ever, leads to permanent neurology sequel. So chorea can be diagnosed uh, sometimes without fulfilling the, major, uh, the criteria for diagnosing acute rheumatic fever based on the Jones criteria. Because the, the, the latency period is too long and we, we may not get antibody titers if we determine at the onset of symptoms. When we see the management, uh, the component of management, uh, the component of therapy management of Sinam's chorea include uh, secondary prophylaxis symptomatic treatment of uh, involuntary movement and also educating and supporting uh, the family and also the patient. When we see the secondary prophylaxis for uh, Sydenham's chorea, WHO recommends penicillin G IM every 3 to 4 weeks if the patient's weights are greater than 30 kg, 1.2 million international units if it is less than 30 kg, uh, 600,000 international units uh, I am every three to four weeks and the duration of treatment is uh, dependent on the severity of the cardiac involvement. If no cardiacs, uh, it might be stopped uh, prophylaxis after five years or at age 18, whichever is longer. If there is mild cardiac, it should be uh, continued up to 10 years or up to age 21, whichever is longer. And if, if the cardiac is moderate to severe, it should receive, the patient should receive uh, penicillin prophylax lifelong. Secondary antibiotic prophylaxis has been shown to reduce the risk of new cardiac lesion associated with recurrent rheumatic fever, but the effect of prophylaxis on the recurrence of chorea, however, is less clear. In a study performed in Jerusalem, 10 out of 19 Sidram's chorea patients developed a total of a level recurrency of chorea. From this, only 6 out of uh, 11 recurrency were associated with either poor penicillin adherence or an increase in ASO titer. This reappearance of chorea were not predictable by either uh, period rheumatic fever activity or cardiac finding. So in this study, uh, penicillin prophylaxis is uh, shown to be, it's not it, it doesn't prevent the recurrence of 
Korea. But it, it is shown to be, uh, it prevents the recurrence, uh, recurrence of cardiac findings. Whereas on another study, which is then to determine the effect of prophylaxis uh, in preventing recurrence of Sirenam's chorea and to discover the risk factor associated with occurrence of symptoms. 18 children with symptoms over a five year period were uh, prospectively identified. Of this, 10 were boys and 8 were girls. Uh, the majority occurred between the age of 8 and 10 years. And the Sirenam's chorea was generalized in 14 children, which is one sided or hemichorea in 4 children. Uh, in this study, there was no difference in the incidence of right and left-sided hemichoria. Among the risk factors examined, only a stroke of chorea in relatives had a significant association with uh, occurrence of Sirenam's chorea. And a comparison of recurrence between those who, who are given prophylactic long-acting penicillin and those who had none showed a statistically significant difference in the recurrence experiencing between the two groups with p-value of uh, less than 0 0.02. So, so in this one, if the patients are given uh, prophylactic penicillin gene, that it decreases uh, the risk of recurrent sedenomous chorea. So uh, when we compare uh, with the first one, it, the result is uh, almost opposite. And when we see the symptomatic treatment, sedenomous chorea improves gradually with a mean duration of three to four months. Uh, full recovery occurs in almost all patients and the symptoms may persist for up to two years in certain in few patients. There is no global accepted protocol to treat uh, Sidenam's chorea uh, and the different centers use different drugs as a first line. Some use dopamine receptor antagonists, some use anticonvulsant drugs, some use uh, corticosteroids, others use uh, IVIG or plasma and also plasma exchange for severe choreas. So there is no uh, globally accepted protocol to treat Sidenam's chorea. When we see anticonvulsant and dopamine receptor antagonists on treatment of Sirenam's chorea, uh, on, uh, in a retrospective study of for two patients with Sirenam's chorea from South Africa, 39 were treated with haloperidol, and 25 of uh, these patients reported side effects severe enough to cause the physician or the parent to discontinue or reduce the dose. So in this study, haloperidol was found to be to have uh, uh, significant side effects that makes either the physician or the parent uh, to discontinue or reduce the dose. In another study, a comparing study from Turkey compared the efficacy of uh, carbamazepine and valporate for Sidenam's chorea. Uh, in this study, there were no significant difference between the groups with uh, respect to time of clinical improvement and time to complete remission and also recurrence rates. So in this study, carbamazepine and valporate have uh, similar efficacy rate and also uh, the risk of uh, re recurrence is almost similar in, in both groups. Phenobarbital is uh, rarely used today because of sedation and also other side effects. So it's almost uh, it's not used in those days. In a study done from uh, Venezuela, which compared the efficacy of carbamazepine, haloperidol, and valporic acid in treatment of uh, 18 patients with Sidenam's chorea, six, six patients who received valporic acid and uh, five children who are treated with carbamazepine, they did well with uh, no side effect compared to those seven children on haloperidol, of whom only three improved. The remaining four who are taking haloperidol for uh, Sidenam's chorea were then given valporic acid and the symptoms improved within a week. So in this study, uh, valporic acid and the carbamazepine showed similar efficacy and uh, they did well in controlling the signs and symptoms of uh, Sinam's chorea, whereas uh, in, in those patients who took haloperidol, almost half of them, they didn't improve and they took valporic acid and they improved again. When we see the, uh, the place of immunomodulatory therapy in Sinam's chorea, that means corticosteroids, IVIG, and the plasma pharesis. The use of prednisolone for Sinam's chorea was assessed in a controlled trial in which 37 children and adolescents were randomly assigned to placebo or treatment with uh, prednisolone for four weeks, followed by a gradual tapper. Patients in both groups improved with time. Those who are on placebo, those who are not taking anything, or uh, and also those who are taking prednisolone, both of them improved with time. But those in the prednisolone group improved more rapidly. A significant reduction in a mean core intensity score at week one versus week two and three, and earlier complete remission.
those who are taking prednisolone shows earlier complete remission. The occurrence of relapse was similar between those who are taking prednisolone and those who are assigned to placebo, and no severe adverse events were observed in the prednisolone group. So in this study, they suggested uh, using corticosteroid as the initial treatment for sedans chorea, and a repeated course might be required if uh, an exacerbation occurs. In another study, uh, 22 children treated with steroids were compared with placebo in a randomized double-blind parallel study. 2 mg per kg per day prednisolone was given for 4 weeks and then uh, tapered. And the chorea intensity and the chorea remission time was significantly shorter in those that are assigned to the uh, prednisolone when com we compare them with that of the placebo. So in this study also, prednisolone shows significant uh, shortening uh, duration for uh, remission. In another study, plasma exchange and the IVIG were compared with prednisolone, and the results were not statistically significant, but the clinical improvement appeared to be more rapid in plasma exchange in the IVIG groups. So in this study, uh, even though the results were not statistically significant, there is more rapid improvement in plasma exchange in the IVIG group than that uh, those patients who are taking prednisolone. Uh, in another study, uh, a review of uh, which was done on the review of the current evidence for treatment of sedans chorea. Penicillin prophylax appears to reduce the likelihood of uh, further cardiac complication in the recurrence rate of chorea, and the data on symptomatic therapy for chorea are limited to individual case reports and the serious and uh, rare comparison studies. So, in this study, the efficacy of steroid use is supported by a single uh, placebo controlled study and several case series. And also information on other immunomodal therapy such as IVIG and the plasma FRS are limited to a small number of reports and also single comparison study. Uh, treatment decisions in Sedam's Korea are uh, currently based on the treating physician's clinical experience, the desire to avoid side effects, and also the existence of only limited scientific evidence. Based on a review of available literature, according to this study, Korea often improves with uh, symptomatic therapy and immunotherapy tends to be uh, reserved for those who fail to respond. Steroids are beneficial, however, data using IVIG and the plasma virus is very limited. And large and well-controlled studies using standardized assessment scales are required if therapeutic decisions for Sinam's Korea are uh, to be based on meaningful information. So this is the main message of this study. So based on uh, different studies that we have seen above, based on the above evidences, the recommendation is for severe chorea, it is better to start uh, in our setup. Uh, it is better to start prednisolone 2 mg per kg per day for 4 weeks, then tapper. Or if it is, uh, if it is severe chorea, which is not improving to prednisolone, it is better to give IVIG and uh, plasma pharesis. For mild to moderate chorea, either valporic acid or carbamazepine can be uh, started. And for all choreas, monthly penicillin prophylaxis, supportive psychotherapy and the follow-up is uh, needed. So this is my conclusion from all the st uh, studies that are done above. This, those are my references. Uh, thank you. Don't forget to subscribe and like the channel for uh, further uh, pediatric lectures.